Okay, so what did did we do for music last time? It was uh, oh, it was Civ Six soundtrack. Let's try like Civ Five. Oh, but I'm so. I've listened to the Civ Five soundtrack so many times. Maybe we can do this six classical era music because we did atomic last time. Let me search for that. Room theme ancient. Sounds good. There we go. to myself this music sounds familiar oh maybe it's because I played 7 6 as Rome <laughs> that would explain that So we have a Patreon now, yay! Yay, Patreon! A bunch of reward tiers. Also, a post for uh, patrons only. With, with uh, statistics, this and a bunch more. On the survey that I did for Grand Strategy Games. Suffer is there. Hi Suffer, how are you? He said, yeah, I lag, lol. What do you mean you lag? Like is the stream lagging? Are you lagging? Do you have legs? I have legs my, and my legs are so sore right now because of uh, jujitsu. Man, it absolutely destroyed my legs and my hips, and I only did like half a normal class. Was this the industrial and Roman music? Yeah, I mean atomic. It jumped to, to the atomic stuff again. I mean, I really liked this song, but I, I wanted to hear the classical ones. But I can't stop this music, it's so good. Oh, the bass. So good. Um. Anyway, let's let's get focused. We're already at six patrons. Thanks so much to uh, the six people. And uh, there's more people that said they're gonna they're gonna support, become patrons soon. Like two people said they're gonna do Caesar, which is the top tier. So that's gonna be cool. And if just one of them does it, then we have the a AMA on Reddit. And that's gonna be cool. So yeah. I'm gonna... 
I'm just gonna post the link to the Patreon on chat so if anyone joins they can see that. Okay. So yeah, the Patreon. If you have any questions about the Patreon, let me know. Basically, I, I think I explained everything either on Discord or here and this huge, huge text. Uh, but yeah, you get uh, Steam keys, Discord rewards, your face in the game, stuff like that. Anyway. Latin. The language of the Romans. Let's learn some of that. Where was I last time? I read this. I read this. I don't remember Osculum. I always stopped when it switched to Emilia. Okay. So. Okay. Let's see what Emilia does. Emilia, Condelia? Oh, this music is loud. Chill out, music. Let's try to find the ancient ones. So Emilia Condelia e Peristolo in Atrium Intrat. So Emilia with Delia from the Peristolo enters the Atrium. I think this is it. Leta ad Iulium adit eunque salutat. Happy ad it. Ad Iulium ad it eumque salutat. Let's look into ad it. What is the meaning of ad it? Adeo. To submit a cause to a referee. This is probably not what they mean. Ad it, it's at least, it's, it was ad plus it. Add it equals add something it. Oh, it is to go, right? So it's like going to entrance access. Latin verb. 
Adeo. I think I don't think it's the Adeo one. I think it's it's from eight, which is to go and then add go to or go from. I never remember which is which. Yeah, to go. Ao eight. So she happily goes to Ilius and uh, salutes him. Eumque salutat. And here she is saluting him. Emilia viro su osculum dat. So Emilia gives her man a kiss. Julius Emilie Osculum dat. And Julius kisses Emilia. Osculum is such an ugly name for a kiss. Really? They called it Osculum? It sounds like a medical device or something. Like. Hold on there, sir. I have to insert the use column to measure your temperature. The main opening in a sponge. See? It's, it's like biological and medical. But it's a kiss in Latin. What an ugly word for a kiss. Anyway, Julius, quid agit Julia? So, what is Julia doing? Emilia. Rosas carpit in orto. So she's, I think she's like plucking roses in the garden. Julius, curite in ortum pueri et vocate eam. This music is so good. Uh, I imagine the soundtrack for Historia is to be something like this, very clean, very simple. Sounds very old. I like it. Anyway. Curite. Is this run to? Yeah. So run to the garden boys and call her. Quintus curit. Quintus runs. Marcus non curit, said Ambulat. Marcus doesn't run, but walks. Julius imperat. Age, curie marche. Age is like, do it? I think so. Yeah, move. Move. Move, run, Marcus. Etiam Marcus Curit. I always forget Etiam now, I think. And so now. Also. Sure. The useless words. Also, so Marcus also runs? Whatever. Pueri per peristilum in ortum currunt. So the boys. Per peristilum true. The peristilum run into the garden. Something like that. What? Did you really? This is like uh, something fair. She once was a true love of mine. Scarborough Fair. 
Nice. So. <clears throat> no, we're back to the Roman Atomic team. Why is this coming back to me so much? I was gonna look into Peer. True, sure. Does he thought? Um, Ilik autem puella non est. What is Ilik again? He, she, it. Sure. Autem is but. Why is like she, but, girl is not? Why do you have she and girl? If it's the girl, then you don't need a she. Supposedly, but apparently you do. But anyway, it says like, but the girl is not there. Pueri ex orto per peristulum in atrium ambulant. So the boys from the garden through the, peri the peristulum into the atrium walk. I'm pretty sure that's correct. But I could be wrong about the in. No, in two, sure. Marcus. Julia neque in orto neque in peristilo est. So he says that Julia is not in the garden and is not in the peristilum. And Emilia says, Is Nesira in Orto? Is Nesira in the garden? Quintus. Non est. Nulla ancilla illic est. Oh, is this like de there? Can illic be there? Instead of she? No, he sh only that place there. Okay, so it's there. Elik is there. So he's saying uh, she's not. No, uh, no slaves are there. Emilia. Non solum Julia sed etiam sira abest. Delia i ad cubiculum Julie. I'm getting a bit confused now. Non solum Julia. So. Yulia is not alone, but Etiam. Is Etiam with? Can Etiam be with? No, two, still, even now. But Syria, at best, at best is absent. So it's like she's also absent. Not sure. Delia i ad cubiculum Julie. I always forget small words. Delia i ad cubiculum Julie. So Delia is the one of the slaves. Oh, E is to go. 
and uh, imperative. So Delia, go to uh, Yuli's room. Okay. I'm gonna stop the lighting right here. Let's do some historical research. The life of Cicero by Plutarch. Where did I stop here? I always stop at the... Probably here is 15. Yeah. So... Soon afterwards, Catalan's soldiers began to gather together in Etruria and to form themselves into companies. The day fixed for going into action was drawing near, and at this time there came to Cicero's house about midnight some of the most powerful and greatest men in Rome, Marcus Crassus, Marcus Marcellus and Metellus Scipio. They roused the doorkeeper by their knocking and told him to go and tell Cicero that they were there. Their business was as follows. After dinner, Crassus's Crassus doorkeeper had given, him, had given him some letters, which had been left by an unknown man. They were addressed to various people, and one, which had no signature, was addressed to Crassus himself. This was the only one which Crassus had read. It had informed him that there was going to be much bloodshed by Catalan's orders and advised him to slip away secretly from the city. Crassus had therefore left the other letters unopened and had come at, at once to Cicero, quite overcome by the nature of the news and wishing to do something to clear himself from the suspicion he lay under because of his friendship with Catalan. After thinking the matter over, Cicero convened the Senate at dawn. He brought the letters with him, handed them to those to whom they were addressed, and ordered them to read them aloud. Every single letter was found to contain information of a plot. Quintus Arius, a man of Praetorian rank, also made a report on the formation of regular bands of soldiers in Astoria. It was announced, too, that Manlius, with a large force, was hovering about the cities in that area, in constant expectation of some news from Rome. Then the Senate passed a decree that matters should be put into the hands of the consuls, who should accept the, si accept the responsibility of arranging as best they could for the security of the city. This is a decree that is only rarely passed by the Senate and only at times when great danger is feared. So this is the Senatus Consultus Ultimum. Which is like the... The dictatorship without a dictator kind of. Armed with these powers, Cicero entrusted the conduct of affairs outside Rome to Quintus Metellus. 
He himself took charge of the city and went out each day with so large a bodyguard that when he entered the forum a great part of the whole area was filled with the men who were escorting him. <clears throat> Catalin now became impatient of any further delay. He decided that he himself would break out of the city and join Mendelius and his army, but first he instructed Marcius and uh, Cathagus to take their swords and go to Cicero's house at daybreak, as though to pay him their respects. They were then to fall on him and make an end of him. This plot was revealed to Cicero by a lady of good family called Fulvia, who came to him by night and told him to be on his guard against Cattagus and those who were with him. At dawn, Cattagus and his party arrived, when they were refused to entry, became angry and created a disturbance at the door of the house, thus making themselves more suspect than ever. Cicero then came out and convened a meeting of the Senate in the temple of Jupiter Stesius, or Sator, as the Romans say, which was situated at the beginning of the sacred way as you go up the Palatine Hill. Catalin also attended this meeting with the other senators, intending to defend himself. No senator, however, would sit near him. They all moved away from the bench where he was sitting. When he began to speak he was shot, shouted down, and finally Cicero rose up and told him to leave the city. He himself, he said, was a statesman who achieved his results by words, whereas Catalan's method was armed force. It was only right, therefore, that they should be separated from each other by the city wall. And so Catalan, accompanied, accompanied by 300 armed men, left the city at once. He assumed the rods and nexus of a magistrate in office, raised military standards and marched to join Manlius. By now, a force of some 20,000 men had gotten had been got together, and with this he marched round to the various cities and attempted to persuade them to revolt. It was now open war and Antonius was sent off with instructions to fight it out to the end. The remains of Caledon's corrupt crew who had been left behind in Rome were organized and encouraged by Cornelius Lentulus surnamed Sura. Lentulus came from a distinguished family, but had lived a low life and had once been expelled from the Senate for his debauched conduct. He was now serving as praetor for the second time, the normal procedure for those who have regained senatorial rank. Oh, this is interesting, I didn't know this. And this too. He is said to have acquired his surname of Sura for the following reason. In Sulla's time, he held the office of Quaestor and got rid of or wasted large sums of public money. Sulla was angry and demanded that he should account for his behavior in front of the Senate. Lentulus then came forward and, speaking in a very offhand and contemptuous way, said that he had no account to render, but that he would offer them this, with which words he extended his leg, as boys do when they are playing ball and miss. After this he was called Sura, Sura being the Roman word for leg. Okay. On another occasion he was on trial, and after having bribed some of the jury, was acquitted by just two votes. <laughs> he 
remarked that the money which he had spent on one of those votes was a pure waste, since if he had got off by one vote it would have been quite alright. Such was the character of Lentulus, who was now pushed forward by Catalan. He was carried still further in the wrong direction by the empty hopes held out to him by false prophets and fortune tellers who recited forged oracles in verse, which were supposed to have come from the Sibylline books and which declared that three Cornelii were fated to enjoy absolute power in Rome, that two of those, Sina and Sela, had already fulfilled their destiny, that now the powers above were coming to him, the third and last Cornelius, and were offering him absolute power, and that he ought by all means to accept this offer and not ruin his opportunities, as Catalan had done by delay. Okay. I think I'm gonna make it as a short stream and end it here, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.